What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I am reviewing the Final Approach Goose Silhouettes. But real quick before we get into it, be sure to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of the latest outdoors content. Now let's get back to the video at hand. So, like I said, reviewing the Final Approach Last Pass Silhouettes and I have two different kinds. I have Canada Goose and I have Snow Goose. They also make Speckle Belly but don't have a lot of need for those in Nebraska because we don't get too many opportunities at speckle bellies, unfortunately. So we'll start out with the Canada Goose ones first. And as you can see, I got the carrying case with them. This holds five dozen decoys. On the front is a snap here, pretty simple, just like so. And there's two snaps on the side as well. And then it comes with a nice sling with a pad on it. And you could probably squeeze a few more silhouettes in there, um, how I like to store them. And I would recommend the best way is to put stakes side facing up. Just seems like, you know, you're not gonna poke holes in the bottom. And I don't know, that's just my preferred method to do that. And then there's also room to keep one of these in, just a rubber mallet for hammering them into ice or fields or wherever you're hunting really. So that's pretty much all there is to it. It's just a basic carrying case. You don't have to order the carrying case. I believe there's a deal where you can order five dozen and then the carrying case and it saves you a little bit of money. You can also order the goose decoys by the dozen as well. And with each dozen, they come with four different head positions for the Canada geese. So you get three of each. This is the sentry, you know, neck sticking straight up. I'll try to get the names right on these. I believe this is the feeder, you know, looking for some corn or whatever else. It's the walker. Texas Ranger, but just the walker. And then uh, the searcher looking for, you know, grain or whatever else, who knows what he's looking for. But those were the four head positions from this past year. And on their website, it says they're gonna update head positions. So next year, there's gonna be four different head positions. And then you can combine them with this. Uh, who knows what they'll be, but that's kind of exciting. As far as the decoys themselves, you know, they're a typical standard Silhouette, I would say, you know, fairly thin, kind of a plasticky material, waterproof, got a little FA there, and then plenty of white spot if you want to put your initials or, you know, some people brand them even. Uh, fairly lightweight, you know, five dozen of these is nothing to just pick up and carry. Throw in a sled, I, that's what I do a lot, and then you can just pull them, and they work. <laughs> these work really well. I took them out. And, uh, you know, I'd mix them into spreads with floaters and full bodies or shells, took them out, ran them by themselves, and had great, tremendous luck with them. Uh, so I, I'm really impressed with them. So one thing that I will say about them, and I'll say it about all silhouettes of this kind of make, is don't hammer them into ice. Otherwise, you will split them. Uh, that's not really a testament to the decoys, more just me being rough on stuff and going forward, I'm definitely gonna take a drill so I don't have to break them, but cold weather, cold plastic, and smacking something with a hammer into something hard is not the ideal way to get silhouettes in. But, you know, if it's so cold that your drill batteries die, you gotta do what you gotta do. So I guess I'll talk about the stakes here, and there's a couple differences than some other silhouette companies out there, so. There's an example of the stake. It's a little wider than some other silhouettes and it's a little thinner stake. So the advantages to that is the wider it is, it helps hold it against the wind a little better, especially if you get it all the way driven in and the thinness helps it go into that frozen ground a little easier. The drawback is because it's a thinner gauge wire, if you're trying to hammer it into ice and it's super cold, you can bend them a little easier. But if you take care of them, and don't hammer them into ice, you shouldn't have any issues. Next, I'll talk about the final approach, last pass snow goose decoys. And these come with two positions. So you've got kind of a feeding position, and then I'd call that a sentry position. And I believe it was like six and six. I can't remember off the top of my head now, but I mean, snow geese, you're going for more numbers. But what I really like about these are you know, once again, the stakes in that frozen cornfield or frozen wheat field, whatever your hunt snow geese in, they do go in really easily. And we 
separated the silhouettes in during a hunt just because we wanted to see if the birds, you know, see how the snow geese responded to them. We had snow geese land out with them. So they do actually work with them. I know silhouettes in the snow goose game are kind of a newer, newer thing as birds typically work vertically, but I was actually impressed with how well the birds keyed in on them. And what I really like them for in a snow goose spread is to put around like my layout chair, my, you know, stuff you want to hide in the field, break up with shadows and just kind of, it's kind of like a flat board, you know, just kind of something to hide behind, something to break up some form. So that's what I really like about them. And other than that, you know, they're, they're pretty simple decoy. Once again, thin, fairly lightweight, easy to carry. I mean, you could carry 10 dozen of these out, two, two bags of them, like nothing. They're not, they're not heavy at all and they go in fairly easily especially with a little mallet and if the ground's thawed then it's not even a problem you don't even need a mallet more than likely but other than that you know that's really all there is to them they're a 2d decoy and uh they get the birds in you, you just want to put them about three to four foot apart from each other in different angles you don't want to you know have them all facing the same angle you don't want to have all the same head position especially a sentry position you want to have some feeders and um whatever other head positions they have. I'm really impressed with how well they did last year and looking forward to throwing them back out and get some more birds over them this upcoming season. So that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions about these that I can help answer, please drop them down below and we'll catch you out there. See ya.